everyone, this is Mrs. Baker, here with your notes on flowering plants. Or angiosperm, as you may have seen in a previous video. And our guiding question is, what is the advantage of flowers? of flowers having bright patterns of color surrounding the reproductive structures. Sorry, I write so I wrote it so big. Okay, so flowers come in all shapes and sizes of all colors, um, but despite all of this, flowers have one function. So flowers have one true function, which is reproduction. Yes, they're pretty but their main function is to reproduce. So the definition of a flower is the reproductive structure of an angiosperm. Of angiosperms. And there are several parts to the flower that you need to know. The first is the sepal, which is the leaf-like, the leaf-like stru um, structures that cover and protect the flower bud. before it opens. So I have a, a daffodil here that hasn't opened yet and you can see the sepal really clearly here. It's this kind of little leaf here and right now the, the flower has not opened. Here's one that has opened and you can see the sepal being pushed back. So those are our sepals. Then we have the petals, which you should all be familiar with. And the petals are the most colorful part of the flower, and they help attract pollinators. So these pretty colors and the pretty smell are not just for us to enjoy, but they actually attract bees and other pollinators. Um, the next part is the stamen, which is the male part of the flower. So this is the male reproductive parts, which have a thin stalk called a filament and an anther which is where the pollen is. where pollen is produced. So on our opening flower here, you can kind of see, if I open up this petal a little bit, you can see these guys sticking up here around the edges. Those are the anthers of the stamen. I'll show you one that I pulled out. All of this is the stamen 
this is a filament and this up here is the anther and if you were to touch it you would get actual pollen on your fingers next we have the pistol the pistol as you guessed it is the female part female parts which consist of the stigma which is the top sticky part it's sticky so that the pollen can actually stick to it which is the top sticky part which is connected to the ovary through a tube called the style. Um, and normally you will find these in the middle of the flower. So here's in my little dissected, I kind of tore this guy apart, in my little dissected daffodil, this little guy is the, the um, stigma, and this is the style, and down here is the ovary, which I've actually cut open. Let's see if you can see that, so you can see all the little eggs on the inside. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because it's all yellow, but it's the uh, stigma of this one is sticking up right here, right in the middle of the flower. which goes to the ovary through a tube called the style. Um, and the ovary, as you guessed it, is where ovules or egg cells, where ovules grow into seeds if there is fertilization. Grow into seeds if fertilized. All right, now we're gonna make a little chart um, with the differences between um, the two groups of angiosperms. So there are two groups of angiosperms. We have monocots and we have dicots. And we are going to look at so here, we're going to look at their seeds, their leaves, flowers. Surely you know what? I'm going to make a little space because we'll probably need a little bit more of that. Their seeds, their leaves, their stems, and roots. Okay, so the seeds of monocots, what distinguishes them is that they have a single cotyledon. Those little leaves that are part of the embryo. So I'll just draw a single um, leaf coming here. Whereas in a dicot, we have two cotyledon which is why it's called a dicot to cotyledon. So we have our seed with two leaves. Okay, um, if you're not looking at the cotyledons, you can tell if a plant is monocot or dicot by looking at their leaves. In a monocot, they have parallel veins, those little lines that we see on them. So here's a leaf, it has all these lines that are parallel. I have an example here I can show you. Whoops, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, I don't know if you can see that all the little lines on there go parallel to each other. Turn back to where I was.
Okay, sorry about that. So those are parallel veins. And in a monocot, they have branched veins. Um, so think about like a maple leaf. The veins go in lots of different directions. Kind of like these leaves here from uh, roses. Those are um, mono, uh, dicot veins. The flower parts in a monocot, so the flower pots, parts, sorry, are in groups of threes. So you'll have one, two, three. One, two, three. I don't know, that's an ugly flower, but there it is. Um, and then the floral parts in a dicot are in um, four or five. Fours or fives. So one, two, three, four, five. And then finally, you can tell by the roots. Monocots have fibrous roots, which are these little hairy, um, tiny little roots that kind of spread out all over the place. And dicots often have tap roots. Um, and a great example of a tap root is a carrot. It's this really long main root. It's a carrot. All right, so these are your notes on angiosperms, flowering plants, and I'll see you on the next one.